So here I am in that undisclosed location. Let's go ahead and build King Ghidorah. And this is for the 65th anniversary from 1954 to 2019. So what do we need to do to be able to build this? What do we need to have? Preparation is a key. Now I'm building in a hotel room and you may just well be doing that yourself. So it may help to, to get a few tools that you might need for this build. So I already showed you this earlier. I picked up this nice little hobby toolkit off of Amazon. So anything you see me do in this build is available on my Amazon store. I put a link in the description below. But you know the basic tools are here, so I'm not going to go over that again and I'll cover these tools as I go along in this build. What may also help is the addition to this toolkit is I also purchased a really nice X-Acto knife uh, from Hobby Lobby which happens to be about 40 miles from me on where I'm staying. I uh, purchased a few Weira screwdrivers from my Amazon store and this is the uh, PH1 and the PHO screwdrivers. So those are there. I also included a Sharpie marker. Never know, you might need to mark a part with a Sharpie. And some Gorilla Glue. I purchased that over at Walmart and this is a CA glue or what we call a super glue. There's that. And I purchased some new, uh, to me, this new putty by AK modeling and uh, I will do a review on this a little bit later. And last but not least, while I was at Hobby Lobby I picked up some uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement in case I need to glue anything on this kit. This kit is snapped together but like I said I'm going to be gluing the parts. So I'll be right back and we'll see how this turned out. So part of the planning also is you want to look over the instructions just to make sure there aren't like two different versions that you need to build for the same kit or any special instructions that may be required. So this is a simple fold out instruction manual. It's uh, very basic and to the point. We have steps one through looks like a total of just eight steps. So we're simply going to be putting pieces and all parts together. So. Um, it does give you some special instructions in here during those specific steps and we'll go over those as uh, I build along. So I'm just going to take and get this ready for myself and I have it as a handy reference and I'll just take and fold it to where I can actually see the specific step I'm on. So we're on step one. So for step one we uh, gather parts 22 and 23. Now if you're new to modeling it's usually listed on the sprue tree somewhere and on a tab, but in, in this case it's actually on the part itself. So 22 and 23 are these two right here. Now what I would recommend, uh, don't cut right up against the part. Cut to the side of it and then we can trim off the excess a little bit later. Okay. One there, and there. And if you notice how I'm doing this here, you take the, the flat side of your sprue cutter right here and you want to put that up against the part where you're actually cutting right up the, and it makes it, it makes it a clean cut that way. I have a squeaky desk chair in the hotel room here so forgive me if you hear that. Now in this case we'll take our X-Acto knife here and we're going to carefully trim away the excess plastic. It doesn't matter so much here because that's going to be hidden away. But uh, just lightly do it and uh, don't, don't press hard. If you have a sharp blade you shouldn't even have to press hard. It's going to trim it just fine. Just like that. And this one right here, it's, we're going to go into a little bit of the detail or uh, so we want to be careful with that, how we trim it. And I use my, my thumbs as a guide. 
trim that down just a little more without cutting away too much of the plastic. That looks good there. And our next step will be to fit this together. We, we need to see how well it fits together. Okay, so looks like it's going to snap hard together. Now, this is just me. If you don't want to snap it together and you want to actually check your seam lines a little bit later after it's together, I'm going to ream out the holes a little bit so it doesn't snap hard together and I can separate it as needed. I may take and cut the tabs off so I can get a better fit on the seams. That's just a technique for me. But just round them off a little bit here. And a little bit more there. So having a sharp blade really helps with this. Definitely. So I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm making the most of my trip away from home. I thought I would just pick some subjects that would be easy to do. I don't have any paint with me right now. Um, so I, the option is to go over to Walmart and buy some of the craft paint or even go to Hobby Lobby, which is not very close by. And uh, the only day I can really go over there is on Saturday when I'm off. Sunday they're closed. I do plan on getting some paint. It may not happen with this. You know, my thoughts were I was going to try to even light this, which I still may do. Uh, you can buy uh, LED lights on Amazon, or you could actually go over to Walmart and check out the automotive section, and they sell, you know, these little light kits for the cars and stuff. If it's not, if they're not too expensive, I may do that. But sometimes they're a little pricey. You could go to AutoZone or um, O'Reilly's Auto, and you can pick up pick up LED lights there too. You know the automotive accessory section. So that's still a little bit tight. I want it to be looser because I plan on gluing it. But if you if you don't plan on gluing it, don't worry about this. Skip this part and just snap the parts together. <sighs> so that's you know I'm doing things the hard way here, right? But with these scales, I want the seams to match up so I have very little cleanup and puttying to do on the seams without losing the, scale, the detail of the scales. There you go, kind of fitting together there. You can see we, we've got a pretty good seam right here, a gap. There's a gap right there. So that's that's we're definitely going to have to putty that, and we may have to create some scales on that. So it seems to line up pretty good, so I am good with that. I'm going to go ahead and just glue it as is. Get my extra thin out. Be careful with your extra thin. You don't bump it over, so put it in a location that you know you're not going to come in contact with it. And the extra thin, it's very nice. It's thin enough and it has a capillary action when you apply it to the, the model. Now with styrene glues, as this is, you want to make sure you have no paint on the surfaces because what you're doing, you're actually bonding the two pieces of plastic together. If there's paint in between, it won't bond. So that's the big thing. If you happen to have painted that surface where you're gluing, just lightly sand off the paint that way the glue will adhere. Okay. So that's good there. Um, just a few seconds for it to dry. If you're, you know, if you're an expert at modeling, you've been modeling for a long time, really this video is not for you. This is for beginners. Make sure you're in a ventilated area too when using this, this glue. It, it does have a pungent smell to it and really it's not good for you so make sure you're in a vent, well ventilated area. 
And always, when you're done with the glue, close it up because it will evaporate. Okay, so just be aware of that. You could, if you don't keep it tight, you're going to lose a lot of your glue there. I may have to move one of my camera angles here because uh, you're not seeing a whole lot. I'm left-handed and I use my left hand a lot, so the camera on my left side is getting blocked by my left hand. I might have to move that camera. But we'll see with the next part of this video. Okay, so just making sure everything looks tight. Right here on the very end, it wouldn't hurt to get yourself some clamps, maybe some uh, uh, clothespins over at Walmart. You could even buy, spend the extra money and buy some clamps over in the tool sections of Walmart to help you know, hold it together. So I'm, I'm uh, holding this together while the glue sets up as much as possible. And you can see that. Most of you have most of you already know this, but uh, I do have several groups that I moderate on Facebook. And they range from Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Studio Scale Models, uh, Battlestar Galactica, uh, the Aston Martin DB5, um, the Mustang GT500 Super Snake. And of course, I do have my own. Facebook group and pay the scale model kit review. So please join in if you would. I also have an Instagram, so head over to Instagram and search for scale model kit review there. And please uh, hook me up on Instagram and I will follow you back. So it's getting there. My, you know, I got a little bit of glue on my finger. So that looks pretty good. Seems to have set up very well with the uh, Tamiya glue. I'm going to tighten that down. The, the next step on step one, we do the other tail, part 25 and 24. So those numbers are on the back side here. I'll go ahead and cut them off. And these work pretty good for that. And let me move that aside. Get my X Acto knife here. And we'll continue uh, trimming off the extra spray sprue nib there as Nigel from Nigel Model Bench says the nib I never heard that term used before it must be a British term but I like it it's a cool term so why not use it there we go that looks good there uh, later on I can go ahead and sand that down just a little bit don't want to take too much off because you could you could actually create a hole there that looks good there too just a little bit on the end And they seem to go together very well, actually. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go ahead and let it snap together. I'm going to put some glue in the holes so it will be so it will be permanent. So we'll go ahead and do that. And right here, Just throwing a bunch of glue in here. Not too much. Don't put too much in because it could actually uh, create the plastic, cause the plastic to melt where you don't want it to melt. So we'll just put that together. Snap together there, right? And you shouldn't have to use glue on this because it is designed to be a snap together model. Now it, it is very uh, loose towards the back end of the tail. So I'm going to take some more extra thin here. And 
put it on the on the seam. Capillary will carry it carried in. Do both sides. And that should be good there. And hold it together. So if you haven't figured it out, building models is a lot of use a lot of time just letting the glue dry. If I was to use super glue, I could use super glue and this stuff would dry pretty fast and I can move forward. A lot of guys will do that. They'll, they'll tack everything down with, with a little bit of super glue or CA glue and then go back with the regular glue. So that, that may be a good idea to do here. So just that little bit of time. It's glued down the way I want it. And uh, actually the seam didn't fit that well on this one because I didn't do any adjustments. So we'll have to do a little sanding on that and fix that. So I want to go ahead and continue with the glue here just to get a good, good bond on this tail all the way around. Looking good. Another gap there we're going to have to fill with the putty. And we'll talk more about that putty when we use it. That'll probably be another video. I like to let this dry thoroughly for a day or two, maybe just a day, and then come back and do all my puttying and sanding. So that I'm sure will be another video. Okay, so there you have it. We have two of the tails completed. Now we can go ahead and move forward with step two, which looks like we're doing a couple of the legs on the main body. So let me get those parts ready. And just so happens we're using the same tree that we've been using already, so we don't have to find another tree. So they want us to dig out 13, 14, and 15. So in this case, 15 is the foot. We'll cut that off. Let me move these tails out of the way while they dry. And we'll cut off 15. And we want 13 and 14. Turn it over. And it's 13 and 14 just right there. So we'll take and cut that off. And the other side. Right there. And with that, I like it how they, they uh, are attached to the tree where they're actually, except for those last couple pieces, you know, where they, don't, where they had them attached to where the scales were, which makes it a little bit harder. If it's attached here or on the ends, it's not going to be in the way, so it makes it perfect. So that's what I'm looking for here to make sure we don't have to do any cleanup, which we don't. And we can uh, put the two legs together. I'm going to go ahead, just as I did before, I'm going to clean up these holes a little bit so we have more of a loose fit. We can align up, line up the seams a little bit better. And it just takes a little time to do it. No big deal. Excuse the air conditioner in the background. Where I'm at, it's just as hot as Tucson outside. How many of you saw my live stream last Sunday? Did you enjoy that? I think I'm going to start doing more of that. Um, my job keeps me really busy. I work full time, so I try to give you guys all as much content as I can for for having a full-time job. And that looks good. I don't, don't need to do anything with that. So, we'll go ahead and squeeze this together a little bit. Looks pretty good. Pretty good alignment. Definitely going to have to do some sanding though. Let's 
separate this again. Still have just a little tight right there. Get some tweezers out, we can clean that out. These are some nice tweezers that came in that tool set. Just allow me to dig out the extra plastic that happens to be in there. There we go. That looks good. Go ahead and test fit it again one more time before I add glue. Yeah, that's better. Um, all right. So the other technique that you can do for your glue here is, is just add the glue first to it. So we'll do that. We'll put some glue in the holes where the tabs go. And you can actually add glue to the surface. Okay. Just like that. And that will soften up the plastic. Of course, we'll go back and add more glue. glue. There we go. There's one leg done. Now we got to do the other leg. But before we do, they want us to put the foot on. So we'll go ahead and do that. And before I put the foot on, I think I want to clean it up a little bit. It's the sprue nub is right there. So we'll clean that off a little bit, just kind of. Do this. There we go. And oh, by the way, this mat I picked up at uh, Walmart. At a different Walmart, we had a, the Walmart near me didn't have one. I had to travel about 50 miles to another Walmart to get this mat. Okay, so has to go on this way. But before we do that, I noticed there's some seams on the foot. So let's take care of those seams now. One way to take care of it is just with an X-Acto blade and you can just lightly scrape where the seam is and that will take care of most of it for the most part. There's also a sink mark here. You see that? There's a little sink mark. That little sink mark we're going to need to putty over a little bit later. So the other way to take care of those seams, of course, we need a sanding stick. So inside the box is a sanding stick and it has two different grades. It's a real coarse grit on this side and a smoother on this side. I'm going to use a smoother side one. And just kind of go over the seam here a little bit wouldn't look like a very realistic foot if it had a big seam on it. Although what? Godzilla was what? A costume, right? So maybe the seams are appropriate for a costume. But I just don't like seams, so that's why I'm sanding it. So I'm doing it with the real coarse one first. And, um, or this, it's not as coarse, but you know the, the smoother side of this one. And this is a lot like a nail file. It's very hard. There has a little bit of a foam in between, which is kind of cool, uh, but not real soft. So it's a lot harder. It's better for continuing with a straight surface. It's not going to cause anything to round off like your other sanding sponges. Now, this sanding sponge here is very soft. It has uh, three different grits to it. It has a 
polishing grit, a couple of, and a couple thicker grits here. So I'm just going to use this to finish it off briefly here, just to get rid of the, the seam. And if you don't plan on painting it, that's when you want to come back and do a little polish to polish it up where you sand it and it won't look any different. It'll look just like the plastic should look after a good polish. So that's the polish side of it. Now there's, if you look closely at the toenails, there's seams on them. Um, I'm probably just going to take my exacto blade a little bit and get rid of those seams on the toenails that I can see. My eyes aren't that good. I didn't bring in my magnifying lens with me. But uh, I just use readers for this. I am very far sighted. I can see very well far away. When I got to my 40s, is when I started needing the readers. So that happens when your eyes get old and, and they know they're not as flexible as they used to be when you're younger. And that's what causes your vision to give you a little bit of trouble. But readers are enough for me to be able to see up close. So that looks good. All right. So now let's take and test fit this. Make sure the foot's uh, facing the correct direction it is. I'm going to take my sanding stick and just sand that tab a little bit just so it goes in a little easier right? because I want to get a good test fit to see how it looks. I'm doing all four corners. It's a square peg so you want to keep it square. And I'm going to sand down a little bit on the bottom. Good. All right. Let's take and blow that off a little bit. Now let's see. Let me uh, sand that some more. how this fits now. Yeah, that looks good. I'm trying to prevent any gaps whatsoever on that. So that's good. So we'll take the extra thin and we'll douse this with some extra thin at first just to get the plastic soft softened up. There we go. And we'll put our foot on, make sure it's in the proper direction. Boom. There we go. And I'm going to hold it, add some more extra thin. Capillary action should put it where it needs to be. And melt the plastic together. Great. That is good. We've got one more leg to do. Let's get our next leg out. They say we need parts 16, 17, and 18. So that's what these say on here. And carefully cut it off. I'm not too worried about the parts that'll be heading away. So that's that's good there. And that's good there. We're good. Now we'll do the foot. So we have the leg is ready to go almost, and the foot, I'll just trim that back a little bit. If I can find my X-Acto knife, where did that go? Oh, hiding away. See, very small workbench, and I can misplace my tools just like anybody else. So we're just going to trim this back a little bit on the foot just like we did before. I'm going to take uh, a sanding stick, the uh, 
not as not as grit not the real gritty one but the other side just to get get some material off where the seam is on his foot this one does not have a sink mark so that's good we don't have to fill that in take the sanding sponge After this a little bit, right? And then there is a sink. There is another seam there. I'm going to take the blade on that just to get more material off. And be careful how you do this so you don't cut yourself. These blades are very sharp. And that's better. Good. And we'll take like we did before. Now, if you plan on wiring this, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and create a hole to run your wires through. So I don't have a pin vise or a drill with me, so I'm going to create a trench right by that pin. That I could run wires through. That uh, pretty much make the trench as deep as you want, just like that. So if I decide to run wires through this and light up his head, I can do that. Now with that, I'm just going to take the foot and see where I need to put, make this larger to go through. So trench will go right about on the front of his foot and I'm going to just cut away some of this material since I don't have a drill to where I create an opening on the bottom. I may have to go in from underneath. Be very careful when working with the exacto blades. Digging and digging and digging. Pull some of that material out with the tweezers as much as possible. I'm thinking I can go in here. Cut away some of the material in there too. Definitely want to be careful you don't cut yourself doing this. And really I can dig out this later if I wanted. But I really want to create a hole there for the wire. I would like to light this up for you all. See there, I actually broke the tip of the blade off, which might be useful. Having a broken tip on the blade is, is good sometimes. There it is. So I'll make sure I throw that away. And there we go. Created the hole finally. Take, dig that hole, get in there, dig that hole a little bit better, a little bit more there, perfect, okay, so quite a, quite a bit of material got cut away with this, could order an inexpensive pin vise on Amazon, 
I would recommend a pin vise if you're thinking about lighting your kits. So there's my hole. It's actually, you can kind of see it there. All right, so we created that. Good. I'm getting rid of that tip of the blade that broke off. It's in the trash. We've got to create a trench on the other side to run wiring through. So I will do that also. You can actually feed wire through this. It just has to be a little uh, stout to force it through. And then you can feed the softer wire through. You could use speaker wire. You can use get a hold of an old uh, uh, telephone cord. Use that wiring. Or your data cable, get an old piece of data cable and strip the wire out of it to use it. The internal wires in a data cable are perfect actually for this to run your wiring through, which I may do. I have, I'm sure I have some extra here on this trip. All right, so carefully created a trench on this side too, so I can run my wire through that a little bit later won't be a problem. It's on to both sides, so just feed it through. Um, I may clear this out just a little bit so the wire can go through. Just kind of trim that out right where that tab is. There you go. So just thinking ahead a little bit is how that works. So I'm just I'm going to squeeze this together this time, and I'm going to glue it. So we'll show you the difference in the seam repair compared to giving it a little slack and lining up your seams a little better versus just snapping it together then having to work your seams. So you have to be careful here. I just put a whole bunch on there and it's on my finger. So I'm not going to hold that end anymore. I don't want to get fingerprints on the model. Should be good. And our foot. I'm going to take, create a bigger trench on the bottom of the foot here, just a little more. It's hard to see with the camera angles here, but I'm going to show you the trench here in a second when I cut it open just a little larger. There we go. So, you can just see the trench there. You can see it. And you can see the trench there on this side. All right. So when I put my foot on, it should line up with the hole there. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue it. And right there. Okay. So the foot is on there. All right. So we got both legs and both tails done so far. Okay. I think that's a good point to stop for now so I can uh, show you guys this video and get it up there so it's not too long. But that completes step one and two of the King Gidra build. Stay tuned for more. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Hit the bell for all notifications. And remember to head over to my Amazon store. I have links to all the tools 
and supplies I'm using for this build right in there. So take care everybody and happy modeling.